Hour Rugby League Hour. Brought to you by Microbio Solutions Limited, makers of Effluix, the new way to clean up dairy effluent and wastewater while increasing the fertilizer value of your irrigation in one easy step. Visit microbio.co.nz for more. Strong, powerful try. Oh, welcome to it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Tony Kemp, Martin Devlin presenting the Rugby League Hour courtesy of Microbio Solutions. You know this voice well enough. Welcome into the studio, my man. Thanks a lot, Marty. It's good to be back at this time of the year. As you know, Rugby League season's finally kicked off and uh, I know you love your cricket, but thank God the NRL's back in, back in the big big picture, isn't it? Yeah, look, a, a fantastic round. Not all the matches were smoking. You've got to be honest about that. We're going to talk about that to start with. But the comp is as good as it gets in terms of whatever professional domestic competition you follow anywhere in the world. The way that we're going to do this show, ladies and gentlemen, is we're going to break it up into segments. It will be available in podcast form called the Tony Kemp Podcast, and that's available tonight around about 5.30, 6 o'clock across wherever you find your favourite podcast. We're going to kick it off with a thing called Weekend Roundup, where we go through... Not game by game, but I've got a whole lot of questions for you, TK, about exactly what you thought over the, the first opening round of the NRL. And we can go back to Vegas. Up the Wars is a special Warriors segment. We're going to isolate the Warriors because that's always a massive topic of conversation here in New Zealand. Kevin Campion is our legend that we're going to feature today. Campo, of course, we all know what a, what a presence he was at the Warriors. He's now ensconced back in Queensland. We go head-to-head, which is where I pick six or seven different topics, and we both got to either argue pro or con for those topics. The FRUX Cleanup Award, you can decide who turned whatever it was into absolute gold, wiped <laughs> the floor, you know, got the gunk and turned it into something that did something very special this weekend. And we're rounding it off with TK's Top 5, where what you're going to do is you are going to rank your top five teams depend, dependent on however you decide to select them as opposed to how they might be on the points table. Let's kick it. The Weekend Roundup. Most impressive out of all of the games and why? Well, I'd have to give it to St. George. I think... Uh, Everyone had written them off and said that they were going to be right next to the West Tigers and picking up the wooden spoon and Flano's come in there. And we saw it in the trial match the week before. He's turned them around defensively and young Tyrell Sloan at fullback scoring three tries in a game that they weren't picked to win uh, put a smile back on Flano's face. The, the ex-Cronulla coach, as you know, had to stand down for a couple of years, has been hanging around with teams as their assistant coach finally picks up an NRL gig and has hit the ground running. St George has been way too um, far down the ladder over the recent years. I think I still think with the side that they got and some of the senior players around, Ben Hunt especially, uh, could be the smoky this year, Marty. Okay, so surprise package for you. 28-4 that they, that they won. Uh, of course, we had the two matches in Vegas and then we had the Thursday night match, Raiders versus Knights. Ricky Stewart and the Raiders... Every year they get written off as by as many people as those that actually turn around and say, hey, this team is actually capable of it. Is it another year like that for them? Are they a kind of an eighth, ninth, tenth scratching side or can they get that consistency? Well, first thing, it's upside down competition at the moment, isn't it? Because you didn't think the Eagles were going to beat the Rabbitohs. You didn't think the Roosters were going to beat the Broncos who are tipped to be the favourites to, to knock Penrith over this year again in the final. And of course, the Knights at home the team that I used to play for, uh, going down to the Raiders, had to travel up from Canberra. So, Ricky, I think, and his team will be around the the bottom uh, half of the, the four, maybe fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. Um, but he, he's he been there long enough to know what to do. The night's disappointing at home. First up, Caelan Ponga. They've made a few signings. They had a very good start, last, uh, start and finish last year, went on that magnificent run right through to the finals. Um, but in that first weekend of football, look, I think the Broncos have got plenty of improvement in them. I think they're still the team to beat in the competition. Um, but the Sea Eagles, I thought they were very good, especially with Luke Brooks coming over from West Tigers, giving Daly Cherry Evans a little bit of that uh, Kieran Foran uh, mixture because he's a runner of the football, Lukey Brooks. Not normally at that six on the left-hand side. He's normally playing the seven, got his hands on the ball first, but has to play second fiddle to uh, Daly Cherry Evans. And, of course, Tom Trebojevic. There's three of them now. You've got one in the middle, one on the left edge, and one coming at you from behind. Tom Trebojevic is the key to Manly season. If he can stay on the pitch... Well, that's the key, if he can stay on the pitch. It is. It's the key. He's, he's arguably, I think, the best player in the competition. Penrith started slow last year. Tony Kim with us. This is the Rugby League Hour, people. It's ten past three on the platform. All right, so Penrith started slow last year. They lost their opening game. I think it was to the Broncos last year that they lost. They lost the club challenge. 
They then uh, play Melbourne and Melbourne. They don't even score a point. It seems like such a silly question. Is there anything to worry about with them? Or, or look, you know, we saw the evidence of it last year. They will, won't they? They will come. It's just a matter of when exactly they put it together. So, so the Panthers normally bury you. You know, they bury you with position and field position. They've got a very good, arguably the best kicking game in the competition with Nathan Cleary. So if you look at the game that they played on the weekend against the Storm, they could just couldn't hold the football. I think he they completed something like sixty-eight percent of the of the completions. Never got into a position. Nathan still got the kicking game, but never got into the game. And of course, Melbourne down at Melbourne. You know, Bellamy. I think it's a twenty-two year record um, of winning the first game. That's insane. It's, it, it it's is just it's absolutely nuts, insane. It? That's a hell of a stat. Um, but keeps them to zero, and that's last year's premiers and the year before and the year before that going for four peat. Um, I think yeah, the difference with Penrith this year for me. They are starting to look a bit scratchy. They're looking scratchy on the edges. Uh, they're definitely looking scratchy in and around the, the spine. I think you've got Luai leaving, which is going to be playing in the back of their mind. The thing with five in here is how long does he put up with it before he makes changes? Eels versus Dogs. I was really disappointed in the bull, in the Bulldogs. I go, Maddie, I've got to, my great mate, Matt Gunn, who's a Bulldogs fan, and, and every year it's their year kind of thing. It's a bit like, you know, before the Warriors got Andrew Webster. But the Eels last year were really disappointing. Did you see enough in that one game that you think that they are going to be a top eight side this year? Well, not against the Bulldogs. I think everyone's getting a so little bit... So that's your KV. I, I think right. everyone's getting a little bit hyped up about the Bulldogs. Yes, they've signed Stephen Crichton. They've got kick out there. I think um, Burton's the most overrated player in the competition, playing in that sixth jersey. And, you know, the Ford pack is just nothing to ride home about. So... You can have those great players come out of Penrith and try and get the job done, but you're going to have a lot more than that uh, in that Canterbury Bulldogs to compete. And against the against the Neil side, look, when you've got Cartwright out there on the right edge, that for me is a bit of a of a what would you call a fair weather player playing probably the best game of his life out there. Mm, I, I want to see him up against the Pen, Penriths and the Melbournes when the t- going gets really tough. I think that's where you're going to see whether or not Parramatta have the have the have the goods or not. But Canterbury, it's a long year for them. I think that's maybe the one that they got wrong. St George West Tigers, I think it's Canter- Canterbury and the Tigers. Who has to get a lot better? Who do you expect to get a lot better? You mentioned straight away. You said um, you didn't you didn't think the Roosters would beat Brisbane, and I don't know how many people thought Manly would put that many points on South. Those two teams, Brisbane and South, have they got anything to worry about? I think Souths have to get a lot better. I think, you know, they've been the bridesmaid now for too many years and with a player such as Latrell Mitchell back there, Cody Walker was non-existent in that game. He, he, he went by the way um, and they just sort of lost their way up against an, an Eagles side that buried them just with, you know, a decent um, game plan that Daly Cherry Evans, he knows at the top level how to get the job done. So, you know, Mitchell has to step up. You know, he's got a lot to say in the media these days. I think he needs to just, you know, maybe zip it up a little bit get more of it around, um, I'm going to perform on the football field. They keep saying he looks fit. Well, he doesn't look fit. Not to you? Not to me, he doesn't look fit. What does he mean? Do he doesn't look match fit to you? No, he, do- he doesn't. Look, there's a, there's a... He's kind of a guy, he gets thick around the middle. He's that kind of build, isn't he? Like, he, you can tell that. Yeah, and he's, and he's you know, if you could if you could put Roger Tuivasa-Sheik's engine inside Latrell Mitchell, you would not stop him. You know what I mean? But he, for me, he drifts in and out too, off, uh, too often and you can't afford to have that if you're, if you're self-sitting and you're trying to win a competition. You look at Dylan Edwards for, for Penrith, all right? That fullback, he finally made the Australian side last year. He is what effort is all about. Being a fullback, worked his butt off to get into that Australian jersey after three years um, and has won three rings on the back of it. Now, that's what a fullback needs to do. You know, needs to be in it. You know, three the top. You you got to think. Latrell Mitchell, three hundred meters a game every week. Should be. It should be. All right. See, but he should not. be Greg Inglis, but he's not Greg Inglis to me. No, that's what Mundine said. Yeah, Mundine said. You know, keep quiet. You're not. You're not Greg Inglis. You think you are, but you're not. And and to to be um, brutal, Mundine's actually got a point. But who is Greg Inglis? You tell me a kid that's in the NRL at the moment that could do or emulate what Greg Inglis could. Poten- I hope people potential. remember him as being one of the greatest players that's ever played the game, mate. No, I, mean, I, remember, I used to love watching I remember watching him that hitting down play. that sideline in Melbourne when, when he played the Kiwis and f- the first time he played on the wing, that left wing and went down past Clinton Toopey, mate, like he wasn't there. And uh, he striding out down on that far side of the MCG and I was just like, man, I can't wait to watch this kid for the yeah, next right. 10 years. Yeah. <sighs> Overall standard of play from what you saw over the weekend, go back to Vegas. In all of these games, this is the opening round of the NRL. Has it gone up again or not? It has. I, I've got to say that. I think a couple of rule changes 
uh, has pushed it up. I think you're going to see more play at a dummy half than you have in the last couple of years. You know, they've really sped the ruck up, cleaned it up, and players are getting out and trying to milk um, the ruck over and over again to get this this repeat set. Um, the other big rule change is where you're not allowed to lift the leg, and you're not, uh, you're, which means the players are still keeping on their feet. But then on the back end of the tackles, you're not allowed to get downtown early on the kick chase. So you've got the big boys at the back when they're catching that ball on the first two or three tackles, really getting stuck into that yardage set and getting you on the front foot. And the teams that um, can capitalise on tackles four, five, and six, and we saw that with the Cowboys last night running the ball. Oh, I said I guess they ran it more times than they kicked that up against the Dolphins. And it's not to say that they'll do that against everyone because the Dolphins were absolutely terrible. Yeah, they were. That was. Um, but it's just going to show you that you know this new rule, these new two rules, have made the game a little bit quicker. How much quicker can it get? That's the question. Is there a danger that they try and do too much of that and they take away, like, I mean, there's the, I suppose the contrast is, you know, the 60s want their scoreline back with, with Melbourne and Penrith, right? Is there a danger? You, I mean, the balance has got to be right, but what you don't want to turn it into is a game of rugby sevens. It's a game of rugby league for a start. Well, it's a tough man's game, isn't it, Marty? Oh, like, God, mate. I mean, it's, just, yeah. it's a brutal man's game is what it is. <laughs> yeah, That's your, why we love it. Your body, your body tells you that, you know, you're, you're paying the price now. Um, it's a t- it's a tough man's sport, but you can't, you know, if, if they've got to find. I think the fine line you're talking about is how do they make it a, a, um, appealing to people that don't want to see both sides both sides of it. They want a, a good game of football, but they also want the brutality kept in it. A little bit like the MMA when when it got taken over. All right, too much brutality. We need to clean it up. Type thing. I think that's what they're going um, with at the moment, trying to tidy the game up. For me, I think they need to make a couple more changes. I know that everyone's talking about, you know, you've got this group of people in Australia and they come up with all these rules. I think a real simple rule that they should change is they should take 12 metres off defensive sides. Or what they should do is they should take 15 metres off them in, in defence. So when you've got a defensive kick, so you kick it down and the attacking side brings it off their try line, I reckon you take them back 15 metres, the defending side, okay. and allow people to get back into you a lot quicker and then sh- shorten it up as you come along. Um, a little bit innovative, will they Will they think of something like that? I think they have to. I think you have to start to separate players because if you look at it defensively, teams now are two fit, all right? They get too many interchanges. I reckon that's another area they need to change is break it back down to four interchanges. And what does that mean to an attacking side coming off your line? You get hammered. You get hammered, and, and that's that difference between brutality and common sense. Like, if you want to stop the brutality, give them at least an opportunity to run in a line that they can break up. If you keep doing what you're doing, we're going to see a hell of a lot more concussion in the game. Well, I, what I don't want to see is I don't want it turning into the NBA where no one plays defence anymore and everyone is just a three-point shooter. Text messages, great to have Kimby back on the airwaves. Smooth voice on the morning show, always a treat. Rugby league analysis, top notch, and best wishes for the show. Time to change tack. Oh, super! Up the wires. We are always going to have a, a a segment dedicated especially to the Warriors. Massive fan interest in this country. A brand new bar is opening in Kingsland, and that is a 40-20 kick away from Eden Park. So how's that one into the rugby <laughs> Is that board? what it's called, 40-20? Well, I don't know what it is. I mean, I, should, I, th- I was actually thinking it might be called Up the Bars. Up I, don't, the bars. I don't know. But just the fact that they're prepared to take it there, um, you know, I don't know whether that's a slap in the face for rugby or not. It's a, it's a great part of town anyway, and it's also easy access from both west, east, north and south to actually get there. Um, and it just says that they're confident enough to get a crowd in there, not just when the Warriors are playing, but make it a league bar and so forth. Excellent start. If the match was over in 12 minutes, I'd be dancing on the table <laughs> right now, Tony. But the fact is, is it wasn't. The Warriors got off to, like a rocket. The crowd was into it. And then one of the things you've got to do when you're playing away from home is take the energy out of the crowd and you've got to sap that noise down, right? What did Cronulla do exactly? They scrambled in defence. They, you know, they, they tackled their goddamn hearts out. They didn't do, it appeared to me, a huge amount to win the game, but they managed to stop the Warriors winning the game. Yeah, look, I think you've answered, answered that question yourself, Marty. I think, I think the effort um, in, the, in the crucial areas from the Cronulla Sharks was the difference across the board? Uh, look, they they had players. You know, last year Jackson Ford hit the hit the ground running. I thought he he was pretty ordinary on Friday night. Three very big errors that allowed Cronulla to get some momentum when the Warriors should have really ran away with the game in that backhand of the uh, of the first half. And for me, when you look at it and you're looking at efforts and and across the board players playing football, one of the things that 
um, I think we were let down with was in the number one jersey. I think uh, Tane's a very good player, Tua Picky. I think he's a very good player, but I think at that level, when you're playing up against sides that are fighting for the top four, top eight, as such as Cronulla would be under Craig Fitzgibbon, then you need to uh, allow yourself to pick your best players in, in the best position. I've, I, I'm an advocate for Roger Tuivasa-Shek playing centre. Okay. Yep. Why? He's a fullback. He didn't do it in midfield as far as rugby's concerned. He's always been a fullback. And he's a waste. Or a winger. Yeah. And and unless you've got... You now, I think the game's a different game if you've got Charles Nicol Clockstead at fullback. All right? So he knows how to link. He's had a very good uh, season last year. He's been in the competition, been in the finals, understands the importance of that type of game. And I think with... with um, Roger, he was wasted in the centres on Friday night. Well, yeah, it just it was strange, wasn't it? Because I was going to ask you about Sean as well, who just didn't seem to play well what we expected him to play. But what was it with Roger? What did you just get not enough ball, not enough right ball? Or no, maybe the that link combination was, isn't enough time to work yet. The link was missing, you know. And that, and and this is the the frustrating part of it when you're a footballer is you've got no flow about you. You you can't get into the game and you can't keep building momentum because you're trying to do things yourself and and the players have come out there and said that you know instead of building to what we knew we were good at we had players taking things into their own hands and trying to win it on a whim and when you've got that link missing see the fullback position is really crucial this, these days and Billy Slater was the one that modernised uh, the, t- the fullback today so it was a running position event, uh, originally that became a passing position. Then all of a sudden you link both of them together and you're a hooker and a halfback and a fullback jersey. Yeah? You put those together, you've got a young boy in Tang Ta- Tuapiki that was put, thrown into a game. Yeah, he's he's very good on his feet. He's elusive. But he didn't understand the importance of what that link meant for Sean Johnson and the likes of Roger Tuivasa Shik um, out there on that left-hand edge. And for me, they had an opportunity on Friday night when Tane went off with an HIA, they should have moved Roger, which they did, to fullback. They should have left him there. They should have they should have bought Pompey Pompey off the bench and put him in the centres. He's he played all right there, and they should have went back to creating that link for them to give them an opportunity. So you're doing combinations, isn't it? It's only the first game of the season, but you had a combination in Barry and. Well, and, what I and hope Pompey he doesn't was. cut his nose off to spite his face. Look, he's ma- he's making a, a a line in the sand, Andrew Webster. Okay, so he's saying, no, oh, look, I've, I've brought Roger back here and I've promised Chance the, the, the number one jersey and I worked all season, off season with Roger and he's, and he's going to start in the centres. Now, if he, I think if Andrew Webster could go back to Wednesday last week, I think Roger starts a fullback after he reviews that game because it was a waste to have Roger playing out there in that left edge. If we play, see, he ran for 200 metres uh, detained, Roger runs for 300 Okay, he was doing that when he when he finished up fullback. He's got the the motor to do that. But not only that, in that sweeping position that he plays at, he would have caused a lot more havoc than what Young Tain Tua put. Up the was segment, no points scored after two uh, twelve minutes. So, what happened in the second half? Are we, uh, you know, and look, the thing I really like about Andrew Webster is he's as honest as hell afterwards. I mean, he doesn't mince his words, and he's not going to try and sugarcoat anything. But it just seemed that, you know, there was one big run from Adam. No one else was doing that. It just seemed to me that I don't know if it was run out of ideas, but everyone was looking around at somebody else. Where was the leadership at that point? Because when players start going individual and, and you know this and they start going, okay, I'm going to try and win this on my own, that's where the senior players in the team have got to go, okay, no, our pattern. Or is it more like, long question I know, but is it more like Ireland played the All Blacks in the quarterfinal over in Paris and had just played such pattern rugby league the whole time, sorry, rugby, that they'd run 18 tests in a row and they just thought if they kept doing the same thing, they were going to win all of a sudden it didn't happen. And I looked at that on Friday and thought a little bit like the Warriors, that they've kind of almost got into a mindset that if we keep doing this, it's going to work. It wasn't working against that side. No, well, it was it was lined up when it, when it, you know, 12 points after 14 minutes and everyone was just looking for the knockout punch. They had him on the ropes. They just couldn't find it. And all of a sudden, they, they get themselves in a half time at 12-6 and score just after half time. Uh, the Cronulla Sharks and for me there there were a couple of things one was was Tane Tuapiki at the back he didn't get that link going in the in the spine what which is what you would have hoped for but the bench just wasn't effective you know no Noah Kore you had Jackson Ford probably playing one of his worst games yeah, for the club he just, he just and yeah. of course the other one is Wade Egan so Wade Egan's deception out of dummy half has been really good over the last 12 months but you lose Wade Egan you bring back on um, Lusick and you don't get like for like you know, it's meant to go to another level, okay? So you bring him off, you get in behind him. If you have a look at all the good top eight sides, they'll bring someone into that that dummy half position and they'll expose people. All right, what happened with us is we got those uh, changes on and they weren't exposing people. You had to wait for Aidan Fenua-Blake to come back on to make that break. You had to wait for that 
um, rest again and then he had to come back on at the back end of it. So he'll be he'll be looking and licking his lips here, Andrew Webster, and going, give me Jazz Tavaga back. You know, give me Noah Korea back. Let me strengthen my bench. You know, got Walker coming on. You know, in the end, he ended up playing in the middle and tr- just trying to hold on for dear life um, where he should be playing little short balls and getting Tohu back into the game. And unfortunately for the Warriors, it was one of those ones that just got away from them. If you look at all the stats, they won the game. Yeah, but they didn't win the stat that counted, which was the point. They didn't win the main well, stat. Did, I mean, as I said right at the start, did Cronulla have to play that well or did they just have to stop the Warriors playing that well? Well, I heard a comment on the weekend is really good. Um, a real cool comment was, you know, you can't just drift in and out. You've got to you've got to start well, and you've got to continue to keep within the momentum. Um, position and po- um, position is how you win rugby league games. You know, and if you if you're the majority of the ball and you can get into the right position, you've got enough talent in your team to score tries. Yeah, but they just they got plenty of ball. They got into the right position, but then they panicked. How much of it, and look, again, I mean, it's it's too easy to overanalyze the very first game of the season. Look, if the Warriors had won this game of the season, there would have been half of the country saying they'd already won the title, okay? <laughs> I think and they still are. Well, uh, look, uh, part of the reminder is, is that you never get nothing in this comp. And look, you know, the Titans are going to be saying that to themselves, are they? Because they had a St. George side that came that they should have put 40 points on and they got absolutely turned over by it. So the Warriors are never going to be handed to it. My worry before the season started was always around... Was our attack, you know, Dylan, uh, sorry, Dallin scores 25 tries. You restrict him to 10 tries, right? You take 15 tries out of there. Where are the where are those 15 tries going to move to around the field? Do we have enough of that variation? Again, it's only game one, so I don't want to kind of get too far ahead of myself here. But those kind of questions are going to be asking every week. Do we have enough variation? If all of a sudden you can shut Sean down or close his options off and not give him as much time, is there somebody else well, without Wade Egan, there no, there wasn't. That could actually do that, or could create that little bit of point of difference. And that's the that's my point. You know, like when you look at it, and you're talking about Dallin Watini Zaleznak scoring 25 tries. Yeah, it was because Chance Looker Clogstead and the likes were getting that ball to him in a position where he nine times out of ten just we'll had just to put, put it over it the try line. Okay. So the mechanic on the inside of him was working wonderfully. Right. All right. Okay. I'll and get what you. I'm what I'm saying is that on the weekend. It was stop start, Jink, jinky, getting in a bad position. The pa- last pass was poor. A couple of times they picked it up and got away on them. And, they, and then all of a sudden, what turns into attacking play turns into a defensive set that puts myself, my team under pressure. And Cronulla got them in the back end of that. So it's more about getting the team that he needs on the football field. What I'm hoping this is, and and you know, I'm ho- one of the things I can see is like don't cut your nose off to spite your face just because. You made a decision. You don't have to stick with it. The best player and fullback of Charles Nuckel-Clockstead isn't there is Roger Tuivasa Shek. All right, him and Johnson together is lethal. Okay, we've seen that. And the last time Roger did that, he picked up Daily M Player of the Year. Now, just because you've got this mindset that he can be the next Joey Manu, he ain't Joey Manu. I can tell you that right now. Did you see Joey Manu's first round? Like yeah, Joey I'm, Manu I'm was, his, was, was, a, was a pick of the centers. Yeah, he was. Yeah. Okay. So. If you need to put Roger back there and create the space for Sean Johnson, then do it. Because you've got to remember that too. If they're worried about Roger out the back, they can't worry about Sean. And if Sean therefore can go across the advantage line, which he loved last year because that's what Chance did for him, and bring players onto the line with him. It all sort of goes in tandem, you know what I mean? But young Tane out the back dancing around ain't scary. You get my point? I get you. So it's not it's not panic stations or anything like that, but can you see some selectoral adjustment happening then this week? I get, look, I, I, I love Andrew Ebbs. I think he's a breath of fresh air down there at the Warriors. He tells it as it is and he's he holds people accountable. I hope he holds himself accountable. You think he might have got a couple wrong this time? I I think I think if he looks at the mirror and says, you know, if I could pick that side again after watching the, re, the, the, the review, I probably would have started Roger at fullback. Is there an able replacement without Jazz being there for Egan as well? Because we just seem to lose a lot of. I don't know whether I don't know what the right word is. There's focus. We just seem to just lose whatever direction we had around him. It just seemed to me when he's playing, it makes it easier for everyone else, else around him. Yeah, it's it's always a contentious one, isn't it? Because Wade Egan, look, look Marty, the, the, be brutally honest. Warriors across the board from 1 to 17 last year played out of their skin. Yeah, that's they, it. And, 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 picked, and, picked, and best ever seasons for a number of players. You could right? have picked 1 to 17 as player of the year. That's that's how uh, well they played. On Friday night, 
you had three or four players that played well below their best. Right. Well below their best for three or four players, you're in trouble. Yeah. And Cronulla exposed that. So what he, um, Andrew Webster, needs to do is get the team that he needs on the football field and he needs them to get back to that, you know, belief, that belief that they can go out there and perform. It's, a, no, it's, it's not panic station. It's not only, at all. It's it's not, mate, no one's going to remember the first game. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's what I always say. Everyone's talking about the first rounds of the competition. It's the back end of the year that people are looking at because, as we saw last year, they finished in the top four and they're one game away from a grand final. Tony, Kevin, Martin, Devlin, we are talking league for a whole hour courtesy of Microbio Solutions. Coming up, we have the Effluex Cleanup Award. Tony's going to award that his top five where he's going to rank the top five teams from the first round and they may not concur with what's on the points table. Kevin Campion is going to come after the break and then we're going to go head to head. Now we've got six different topics here and unfortunately you get dealt a card whether you have to argue the pro or the con. I'll give you an example here. The Warriors will be 0-2 after this weekend. We play Melbourne next. So one of us is going to have to argue the pro on that. One of us is going to argue the con. Spencer Lenu deserves leniency because apparently somebody said something nasty to him before he called Ezra Man a monkey. Does he deserve the leniency? We'll ask I, get, I think you'll get this, ladies and gentlemen, as we do it. All of this to come in the next half an hour. Can tell you as far as the cricket goes, 244 for seven. They need 35. Cummins is on 17, not out. Kerry, 77. One more wicket. We're still in this. After the break, Kevin Campion joins us. The Rugby League Hour brought to you by Micro Bio Solutions. He's a leech. Our very first special guest today is one of only five men who played in three grand finals. He played 44 games for the Warriors, but by God, he was just like such a stalwart at the club. He played for Brisbane. He's played for his beloved Queensland as well. Um, and, and he wanted to knock my block off at one stage, Kempi. I've never been so scared in my bloody life. Kevin Kempi, and welcome back, mate. Hey, boys. How are you? Kempo, uh, good, mate. Uh, just... I know you're over there enjoying the sun here. The, uh, you know, the Auckland sun's back out here. It's about 12 degrees, which everyone's getting burnt. What are you, what are you up to these days? Yeah. Mate, I've got a cleaning business, a classic cleaning business. I've just, uh, I've just come back from the sunny coast, just coming back from the sunny coast, just checking some venues up there and meeting some clients, taking them out for coffee. And, yeah, it's been a long day, actually, to tell you the truth. Kevin, are you on the tools, mate? Because I can't see you sitting in the office on the computer. You're out there with the brush in your hand? No, I'm not out there with the brush in it, but my office is my car. Ah. And I spend a lot of time in it. And, um, yeah, sometimes it gets very boring sitting here alone. But anyway, it's good to chat to you, blokes. Keeps me, um, keeps me focused. Mate, what's, what, do you, what do you make of the first round, Campo? You know, you've got... Uh your Bronco boys that uh, were meant to have hit the ground running, they lose the they lose the first game up, and of course the Warriors may get done by Cronulla. Anything you've noticed there? The changes in the rules or anything? Oh, I don't think there's. Um, but, you know, you can't sort of blame that. But yeah, you know, I just think everyone's a bit underdone. I, I think um, you know after the hype of last year, um, you know the top four sides sort of. I think they all lost them weekend. I don't, um, but I'm not sure. But, uh, yeah, it looked just a bit disappointing. Um, I think uh, our boys um, played well enough to win that game on the weekend, uh, but they would be very disappointed with the outcome. Yeah, Kevin, so they started off like such a rocket and then kind of just lost their way, and especially in the second half. I mean, was there anything that you saw that you thought, OK, it was, I'd, I'd put it down to this? Was it, was, it, was it Cronulla playing so well, or did they just make their tackles and actually just defend well? Yeah, well, that's what they should have done. I, but, you know, I just, I just the reaction under pressure from a, a few of the um, leaders in the side. Um, you know, like, look, we had to, I, I believe we had the game wrapped up and all we had to do was, you know, basically defend and uh, defend hard. And, uh, but we didn't. Uh, some, of our, some of our kick options were poor and I, I, think, um, I think our kick chase uh, just didn't put enough pressure on... Um, on those first three three tackles. Kempo, when you look at um, the, the way these young blokes are hitting the competition this year, Torrell Sloan down at St George, your old club had a boomer on the weekend. You got Reese Walsh apparently yep. signing a contract for one point two million. Is it is it a concern, um, do you think, for clubs when you've got young twenty one, twenty two year old players um, pocketing a million bucks a year? Well, you know, there's there's um 
yeah, there's examples of that. I just played a, in a charity match up at um, up in Toowoomba with uh, a young fellow who signed from the Broncos to the Titans for a million dollars. I can't think of his name at the moment, uh, but you would uh, you would remember him. Um, look, and he hasn't sort of handled. I don't think he handled that sort of pressure that well when he was playing, uh, being a million dollar player. Um, he certain, certainly didn't deserve um, that type of money that early in his career um, because he really hadn't done anything. I think the, you know, the, the signing was um, a bit like a bit of desperation from the Titans to get him there, um, thinking he was the next up and comer. But um, Ash Taylor, that's what his name was. Ash Taylor, he's a yeah. terrific kid. Mm. Ash Taylor, um, but he's a, look, a terrific kid. Um, but he's you know living in Torpa now. He's still. You know, he's still young enough to be playing in the NRL, but he's, um, yeah, I just didn't think he handled that uh, that hype and that money um, that early in his career. Kevin, you're still playing. That's remarkable, man. I mean, good God, how old are you now? You must be at least 32. You're still playing. Uh, looks 80. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, mate, I, I run on the field. I try not to get tackled. I try not to make a tackle, then I run off the field. <laughs> just, uh, just so quickly. Look, but it's all it. Yes. Just quickly before you go, just in terms of, of, of what you notice, the game when you played was big and strong and fast. It's such a man's game. It's such a tough game. Is it even harder now to play, do you think? Well, they're, more, you know, they're just bigger, bigger and more physical now. So, you know, and they, I, I think the, the structures, um, you know, especially defensive structures, uh, are, are a lot better than what they were in, in, you know, when I, I started playing. Um, but, you know, look, it's so much faster and bigger and physical, you know, I don't think I would be would have been able to compete in today's game, to tell you the truth. I doubt that, man. You would have competed at any level. I know that. Kevin, we love you to bits, mate. You're a name that every time you mention here in New Zealand, everyone goes, wow, that player would love to have him in the Warriors even today. Thank you so much for your time, dude. My pleasure, boys. Great to chat. Cheers, Campo. What a legend. See what you, Campo, a legend. Yeah, mate. What a legend. Hey, look, just quickly before we go to head-to-head, everything about that guy... It just, to me, epitomises everything I love about the game. Yeah. Good God, he was a tough guy. And it wouldn't matter whether he's four foot two, Kemby, I would pick him in any side to play rugby league because it's an attitude that he bought, right? We, we went to Hawke's Bay last year. The Warriors played down against Brisbane. Remember that game? Mm-hmm. And he, he made a, a bee, a, a something in, a, in his bonnet to come and find me, have a beer. That's what type of bloke he is. He's just a dead set... True champion. And, Great team, and mate. He's a salt. And he, mate, he's the best team. He's the best team, man. Him and Natty Wood were so good together. Excellent. All right, let's keep it going. Head to head. Righto, this segment is where pretty much I just put you to the sword. I'd say it's six love, six one to Devlin, and you pull out into <laughs> it at the end of it. There are six different topics here. I'll pick a topic. It's a you, setup. I'll tell you. Tell me whether you're going to argue pro or anti that particular topic. We're going to start with the Warriors will be 0-2 after this weekend. They play Melbourne. Do you want to ask, uh, uh, do you want to go pro or anti on that? I'll go pro. You've got 30 seconds from now. Okay. Well, I think they can go back and turn the clock on the last seven days and put Roger Tuivas-Shek back to fullback and get that link going in and around Johnson, which will allow all their big boys to start pushing through the middle. They are struggling at the moment. No Nelson Sifu Salomona. I don't know if Munster's going to be back playing. He's got that groin injury. I know myself you can't uh, continue a year without him. Without those two players in there, and they get this right with that link between Roger and Sean Johnson, and I actually think they can go out there and put two points on the board. Well, I'll argue the cons on this, and it's very simple. I've got one word, Melbourne. I've got another word, Storm. I don't think I have to say any more. The <laughs> Warriors have a mental block against this team. I can't even remember the last time that we did beat them. Apparently, we were their bogey side. Last year, we went there. There's just something about us playing them that we're going to have to play the very best game we've ever played to beat them. And I'm looking at what I saw last weekend, and I think we're going to have to go up another 50% to be able to compete with this team. Look, they held pen with scoreless. Let me repeat that out loud. How many teams do that? I think that's 1-0 to Devlin. Second question. 
That game, Melbourne Penrith, I've just been talking about, the 8 0 scoreline is the worst advertisement that the game could have had. Do you want to argue pro or con on that? Well, I'll go con on it. I don't reckon it's the worst um, advertisement for the game of rugby league. I actually think it's really good because you don't want 40 um, point blowouts every game. You want one that is really right down to the wire. And of course, when you've got two top teams like the Storm bellowing up against the new kid on the block uh, in Ivan Cleary, who's won the last three competitions and he can keep them to zero, there's always the fight in the old dog, isn't there? And that's what people like uh, to see. They like to see that Melbourne can beat Penrith. Everyone's talking about Penrith going through the year. Yes, they start slow. They're going to win the comp again. But I think the writing's on the wall. Well, I'll argue against that, or I'll argue the pro argument, that it was you know, the worst advertisement for the game. Because the game at the moment is a married at first sight experience. They want eyeballs on the prize. They want to get a different kind of crowd. That's for the purest. That's for the theorists. That's for guys who love the game, guys and girls who've watched it for a hell of a long time. If I'm plonking somebody who's just got, seen the Vegas extravaganza in front of that game, they're going to go, what? It's a really bad soccer blowout. It's a game of basketball where nobody can bloody shoot, mate. Come on, the game's more exciting than that. <laughs> Topic number three. St. George win was no fluke. They will be this year's Warriors. They will make the eight. Do you want to argue pro or con? I'll go pro with this one, and I think Flano has done wonders with the side in the off-season to get them to start believing that the the likes of Benny Hunt, if he can lead a team around and get them playing to the top of their ability, they could actually go out there and make the top eight. Let's just have a look at, at, at some historical stuff here. The Warriors, no one thought they'd end up in the top four last year. And if you look across the St. George side, they've pretty much got... The, the same side. Fanua Blake just about went there, so he thought they, they had the uh, depth in that side. So I actually think Shane Flanagan, he possibly had a, four, a top four side on. Well, I'll argue that is absolutely right. It is bo bollocks, it is bull dust. <laughs> You've got your La La Land and Cloud Cuckoo, man. I mean, this is a team that everyone was picking with to fight with the wooden spoon with West Tigers, and that's why they, they won that game, because the Titans also saw that before the game. You remind me of saying this in three or four rounds, TK, when all of a sudden they've got three or four wins I'll on board. i remind you. Do that because this St. George side over successive seasons has been rubbish. That's it's right. It's like the West Tigers have been rubbish over I successive agree. seasons. So one swallow doesn't make a summer. One goddamn win against the Titans side. All those boys have been sunning it up on the beach for the last six months. No, I don't rate them at all. Spencer Lenu deserves leniency... Because now, a week later, he says somebody said something to him on the field. Leniency in front of the jury, pro or con? Well, I'll go pro because I know you're going con on this one, and I really can't win it. I actually think that, yes, there should be a little bit of leniency on this because it was said tongue-in-cheek in the heat of the moment, as footballers do. And, man, I'm glad you don't hear half the stuff that I used to say when I was out there playing, Marty, because I would have years to, to pay back to the judiciary um, because of some of the comments that uh, the boys used to throw around. Spencer Lenu, yes, he made the wrong decision. Was it um, ma was it malice involved in it? Was it a grade? Grade 10? I think it's a grade 1. Give, give him a couple of weeks. Look, I think that uh, this to me is <laughs> typical of these sports, rugby and league, where the PR department go to work and they decide that, oh my God, let's try and influence the judiciary before it actually happens. This is a week after the event. Two weeks. <laughs> he should have said it a long time ago. To bring it up now to me is just lame. And also, it's not a defence for accusing or saying racially insultingly, insulting something to somebody else. Hey, look, if somebody said something to you, mate, and you were serious about it, and it was provocative, it was insulting, tell the bloody ref at the time, mate, and don't bring it out <laughs> two weeks after the event. Throw the book at them. The Roosters are the best team in the comp after round one. Argue pro or con? Ah, uh, you're kidding. I'm going <laughs> con on this one. I'll tell you what, hey, Politis has got to you too, hasn't he? Hey, offered you a condo down there on, on Bondi <laughs> I'll Beach. Take it. You know what You'll I'm go, like. mate. You'll go on your Tesla too, because that's what they all drive. They drive electric cars and sit in apartments. And you know what happens with them? Then the boys who are eating real steak and eggs and chips, they're going to get the boys who are eating caviar and driving around in Teslas. And I think it's all a flash in a pan this year. And the Sydney City Rooster boys, they're going to jump off the top of that platform. Talking about the platform. Yeah, thank you for that. Yeah. Appreciate that. I will, of course, argue that after round one, they were, because not a lot of people thought that they would beat the Broncos. They held the Broncos to 10 points in Las Vegas. They did it without Big Jared. They were a team that has they always... They probably did it because of him. They got, they've got... Well, I mean, they were all just <laughs> rushing off to join him in the nightclub afterwards. They've got, they've got the cash. They've got the resources. 
they they are a team that will buy their way out of trouble if they had to. <laughs> Last year, we always thought, oh, they're not going to make, they're not going to make, they're not going to make. They did make the eight, and what did they do? They won their first round as well. I think that you know, right now, after that performance, I think beating the Broncos in any week in this competition, you're doing bloody good because that Broncos side is going to go very close to that grand final again. They are, and the, it's not looking good for the Warriors when Sydney City are back in either, is it? We got one more to go. Injuries or an injury to Wade Egan could be the one thing that will derail the Warriors. Pro or con? I'll go pro. I think that the Warriors can get past the Wade Egan thing. I think I think when you're looking at Wade Egan and the influence that he has, they need to find a player in New Zealand to get behind Wade Egan and come out and do the job. So what I'm looking for here is that the Warriors are going to pull a smokey and put a player in here that we haven't heard of that's going to play dummy half. It may We've, we've done the Jez Tavaga, we've done the, the Lusick, let's find out who this next kid is coming through second grade. Well, I'll argue that I'm right on this by saying that that injury to me is the most worrisome one of all because the game changed when he was off the field. Um, I was concerned this year about whether or not that teams would suss him out and suss Sean out. And if they can stymie those points of attack, where does the attack come from? And I'm hoping that, look, this is a wild card, but I'm hoping that Roger takes that pressure off that position. Here's a guy who's got a brilliant brain. He's really intelligent. He's got the experience. He can see gaps and things, and he's got vision. Somebody has to be the Wade Egan if Wade Egan is not on that field. Yep. And do we see Tavita coming back there and playing number nine? Well, I'm pondering. The Influx Cleanup Award. This award gets given every week. Tony decides who it is and for what reason. It can be a player, it can be a club. Effluix, for all of our farming audience, is a product. You have effluent all over everything that you do. This is a green way of being able to turn that into gold. You can use it for fertilizer and everything afterwards. So it's a really important award in rugby league. And I suppose it would be epitomized by the legend that we had on just minutes ago called Kevin Campion. Somebody who does the dirty stuff, somebody who doesn't need to be showered on rose petals afterwards, or maybe it's a team award because it's a collective experience, but it's up to you, TK, who you got. And they just get shist done. Yeah. You know, there's a business out there in, in Albany, I think, called uh, they get shist from down Queenstown and put it in your house. Um, maybe they'll be a sponsor of our show as well, Marty. But this week, I'm going to go to Melbourne and I'm going to go to Craig Bellamy because he got the job done. He got the job done against Penrith, and he's the only coach to have it done and pants them three times since 2014 and kept them to zero. No other team has done that. Melbourne, and not only that, 22 years in a row, if you were backing him, I remember hearing um, a broadcaster say once, he always backs the Crusaders, and has made plenty of them because they've come out and won competitions year on, year out. If you've backed Melbourne Storm to win a game and you multi that for 22 years... You probably wouldn't be sitting here and see, talking to me, Marty. I'll put it that way. So the Storm this week, they get the job done and they done it. They pants them. They kept them to zero. That's the last three-year Premier team that they've done that to. So not an easy feat. Airflurix cleanup of the week award to them. We finish with TK's top five. And they've got an overlap here. TK's top five. And we've got about five minutes, a minute on each of these teams. The way it looks at the moment, Cowboys, Dragons, Eels, Raiders, Seagulls. Say that out loud for the next six weeks and see if they're the top five. <laughs> so let's kick it. I'm going to go with Number the Roosters. Number five. I'm going to go Number with the five. Roosters. That's it. The Roosters for the same reason that you're talking about, Marty, that they basically came into the competition last year as everyone's favourite. I mean, like everybody picked them in, across the across the borders, Australia and New Zealand, that the Roosters were going to go out there and win the comp. I actually think they're back. I think they're back this year. Tedesco, close to the best fullback in the in the uh, in the comp during the week, got picked in the team of the week. And when he's going well, the likes of Joe Manu and so and so on play well beside him. So look out for the Roosters. They hit that top five and get the ball rolling for me. Five. Number four. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a smoky here, and I think that if Tom Trebojevic here can stay on the football field, then Manly are a dead set chance with Luke Brooks at number six. I think they've got plenty of strike power and Ola Colotto out there on the left-hand side. That, he's got six foot, I think he's six foot six. Well, he's in a, something like 130 kilos. Just, Put him in the Ford pack then, mate. Mate, he is. He's a back row, and he's uh, just signed, a, I think it's 800 plus a year uh, for the Manly Seagulls. It's an opportunity that Manly can't miss. Brooks, Oliokato, uh, Olikoato, and of course, keeping the main Trebojevic, which is Tom Trebojevic, on the pitch. I can see them sneaking back into the eight. Roosters at five, Manly at four. Three. 
Well, this is a smoky, and no one's picked them, but I think the Dragons are oh, good God, in, mate. in for a season. I've got to say that. You know when you're a player, when yep. you're a player I and you're know, watching you're football, right. yeah, and, and both of you looking at me are going, what are you talking about? You look for effort. I mean, you look for dead set, the little things that happen. And Shane Flanagan has got the extra 1% coming out of that, that dragon side. And I think with a leader like Ben Hunt, I think he's still hurting from dropping that ball down under the post against right. the Cowboys. never get over it, mate. Never Neither get over it. a Broncos fan like I'll that I'll tell guy. you what, if he, can get him, if he can get him anywhere near the finals and get back in there this year, look out. Right. Now, dragons at three, so that's Roosters at five. That, that is Manly at four, Dragons at three. Number two. Week one, got to give the Parramatta. I've got to say, up against the Titans, Desi Hasler, it looks like he's bought another pub in the Gold Coast too, by the looks of it. Yes. Done what the Warriors have done. Looks like he maybe spent too much of a summer. Desi Hasler was the fittest bloke I ever knew. He um, still, apparently he still against. is. Apparently he's just a- well, I don't know, but he's certainly not looking like he is these these days, and the players don't look like anything um, of, of the talk that they spoke about in the off-season. Titans were meant to hit the ground running up against uh, you know, the, the Parramatta Eels that I think Parramatta this year, Dylan Brown, um, he can arguably be the best six. Wow. In the competition. In the competition. 100%. He has speed to burn, but he needs to, he needs to turn over a new leaf after what went on last year. And it looks, looks to me that he's got the goods. He's fit enough to do it. Has he got the wherewithal to get over what he did last year and get over himself? Oh, that's oh, look. I think he's got the resilience. I think I think you know, being from Northland and coming through, you know, pretty a, a, a pretty torrid place like Northland and getting over to Parramatta. I think he has. I think he's got the resilience to do it. Um, the other thing he has got, he's got, he's got, he's got plenty of toughness. Um, but you know what? I haven't seen in a Kiwi stand off for a long time, Marty. Yeah, speed. Okay, and he's got bucket loads of it. Number one. Well, I want us all to hang on here, okay? Yeah. This including you, Marty. Okay. But I want you to hang on to this Warriors fever, all right? Because New Zealand needs it. All right, there's a stadium going to be built down there in the waterfront. I'm telling you that right now. I hope it's at the tank farm because that's where it should be. Closer should, to yeah. my place is St. Mary's Bay. Yeah, you're just a walk, Eight mate. minutes, eight minute walk to the tank farm. I'll be watching games every week. And I want the Warriors to sell up at Mount Smart because you can't get an Uber there and you can't get any decent food. And if we go to town, we can eat down the road. Go on. You know, there's 400 restaurants there. We can just walk into them. And I want us all to believe and keep the faith and ride the Warriors home against the Melbourne because they'll get the two points this weekend. Roosters, Manly, St. George, Eels. The upside down comp. And <laughs> kicking it all off at the end with the one. <laughs> Two minute drill. We always finish the show with a musical interlude. 1977, this album came out. This was the first song that Meatloaf went absolutely global with. Took the words right out of my mouth. Nothing like a big fat guy singing. We all loved him, didn't we, eh? What a ledge. And Great Australia actor. about to win here. Two runs needed. Cummins has come in 28 off 41. So that's a captain's knock. That's what you call a captain's knock. Kerry's on 98. Does he actually... Well, he's at the other end at the moment. So Australia have, have, you know, as much as I despise them, and I hate their cricket team, I just, I hate their cricket team, but they are a lesson for every sports team in the world, aren't they, in that they refuse to lose. Like, they were four down for 30 last night. They were five for 80. When they needed another 70 or 80 runs or 50 runs, whatever it was, they lose two quick wickets. But the next guy comes in and does the job, doesn't he? It's a lesson, isn't it? Well, it's a green and gold, mate. mate. You know, like I'm like you. I'm, geez, I know where I know where I'd put it. Yeah, yeah, All yeah. Over. Where it probably don't fit. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. They win the Test series two nil. That is our first rugby league show for the new season, and we're going to be back every Monday between three and four. Um, I hear Turbo been touted as the best player in the comp. Did you guys forget about the king? He's got to be up there. Well. Which king are you talking about? I only know one king. And that was Wally well, Lewis. That was Olsen Philippona. Oh, the big O. What am I saying? Of course the big O, because the big <laughs> O actually, the big O was the one player that Wally Lewis set out, played him when we played him in 1985. Good that, God, that tier series, mate. Yeah. That's, well, not only that, he had nightmares, Wally, about the big O, those thoughts. Yeah. Uh, running, running, through, running through him. 
Don't say over him. Running he went through, through him. him. Do you ever catch up with Sammy Punapa these days? You know I haven't seen Sammy for a while. I, I see Dean Lonergan quite a lot. Yep. Yep. So Dino, he frequents uh, a couple of cafes up there in Ponsby Road. So I run into him quite a lot. He's a good bloke, Dino. He's he is always the same. Yep. No matter when, um, the same. when when you see him, he's he's always, you know, got a good story to tell and and nice and polite. But yeah, a few of the old boys. Uh, I just Sam remember Sammy Punapa, mate, because I went to that Auckland game where we beat Great Britain and he went scooting down the side of me. He was as close to me as you, you are now. That's what Carlo Park was like. I could touch him with my pie yeah. as he ran past. I'll never forget that. And he scored <laughs> that winning try. It was just, what a glorious ground that was. Would mate, it be nice it? to have a stadium in town? Oh, it'd be brilliant, wouldn't it? And, and, and actually, and, and here's the thing. A rectangle? Make it like a rectangle, like a football field, That's so you right. can play all the codes on that field. So why, right? why, why cricket kicking up a storm because it's not rectangle? Well, it's a, look, everywhere you put a cricket thing, it affects everything about the cricket because the boundaries are too small and it affects all the code because... You're too far away. Yeah, Eden Park will be free. Go and make a cricket ground there. Well, they're talking about Victoria Park as well, okay? Um, as as a, as a, as a potential. First round up and done as far as the um, the league. Uh, awesome new show, Martin. I was at the game. I don't think RTS would have made any difference at fullback. The Sharks' defence was outstanding. Led to frustration for the Warriors. Two changes I'd make. Jazz comes in for Ford and CHT comes in for Metcalf, says Paul. I just don't know when Chance is, f- is fit. When is he? F- we're probably going to find out this week, aren't we? Yeah, look, I, I, for me, I think Chance is probably a starter at hooker. I actually thought um, young Luke Metcalf played really well. Scored a brilliant oh, try. Oh, that left-foot step um, try was brilliant. That was Frank Bunce against the Yarpies in 97. Yeah, that, that, that link needs working. That link between Johnson, Metcalf, the, the nine and the one, it needs a bit of work. You're not panicking, though. I'm not panicking. On. No one should panic at the beginning of the season because no one's going to remember it at the back end of it. But, you know, you've got to be careful in these blocks of football games. They don't want to go five and zip. No, 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 no. It's about patterns, isn't it? And it it's is. About, and it's also in this competition, I feel like it's one of those ones, like to me, the NFL, you've got to bounce back quick. You win the next game, you forget about the, that last game, right? Always got seven days to correct it. There you go. Melbourne Storm is going to be a hell of a game next up for the Warriors. That is our show today, ladies and gentlemen. The man just set up the try. That was the Rugby League Hour. Brought to you by Microbio Solutions Limited. Solving environmental issues using green technologies. Visit microbio.co.nz. It's time.